You are now listening to the fastest show on iSports Radio. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. Welcoming you to take one final extra lap with us for today, December 2nd, 2021. And folks, a racing season of surprises, thrills, and spills is once again behind us. And we're going to wrap everything up and, of course, give you a preview of the next two Formula One rounds. I was thinking about going on to through Abu Dhabi, but for reasons I'll get to after I bring up my co-host, I just didn't want to do that to everyone after the long season we've had. But before that, of course, we've got to bring in, for one last time this season, Michael Ward, Christopher Lehman. Hello, hello. Good evening, Daryl and Michael. Thank you. It's good to talk to you guys again. This has been a lot of fun talking to y'all every Thursday. I know the fans have enjoyed it as well. So we'll go ahead and get into it. And we'll start with the elephant in the room of why we are not going on to the end of the Formula One season, which is something that's kind of unfortunately been a tradition on this show, mainly because, well, the Formula One season wasn't very competitive over the last few years. With I think the whole time we've done this show, it's pretty much been won by Mercedes, so... Didn't really matter to go through it because they'd already locked it up by now. Obvious reasons, it has not been decided this year. And we could still see Lewis Hamilton win the championship in Abu Dhabi in a couple of weeks. Yeah, with the way that Mercedes is performing now, he might actually do it. Yeah, and it's going to be an interesting ride in Saudi Arabia. But... As you guys know, this show, we do it once a week. And yeah, it's only an hour, but it takes a lot of time out of our days and weeks to put something like this on. And we've been at it since early or no, mid-January, because we always start the week after my birthday, because that is a week before the Rolex 24. We've been rolling on this for the first time all 12 months of the year. And if we were to continue past Abu Dhabi, we would be darn near Christmas. And I don't want to do that to my co-hosts, and I don't want to do that to myself. So, we've ma- I made the executive decision a couple of weeks ago, and when I announced it, that we were going to end the season with our end-of-the-year review show here December 2nd. So that is why you are hearing now our end-of-the-year and our thoughts on how the season went. And we're going to talk about NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, whatever other motorsports we want to to fill out the hour. And, of course, talk about what happened when, what's happening in Formula One as well. And we'll start with that because a lot has changed in the championship since the last time we talked to all of you. As Lewis Hamilton, I would basically left him for dead and now has come storming back. Uh, a win at Brazil... And then a dominating performance at Qatar now has Hamilton within striking range of Verstappen. And this is what it looks like going into this weekend of Saudi Arabia. If Max Verstappen somehow comes out of here 18 points ahead of Hamilton, it's over no matter what Hamilton does next week. Verstappen will somehow survive to claim this championship. If Hamilton wins or Verstappen does not get that 18-point margin, we go into the title-deciding race in Abu Dhabi. Winner takes all for the championship. Fellas, I didn't think we'd get here when Verstappen went through that mid-season charge where they were just, them and Red Bull were just winning everything. But somehow... Some way, we are sitting here with a chance of the Formula One Championship ending the Turbo Hybrid era with a one-on-one fight in the final race. That's a great way to end it there. Yeah, um, I think we had all more or less stuck a fork in Mercedes um, in the, the middle Uh, portion of the season and obviously a lot of things have happened to make this a a very interesting year year um and it's nice it's actually kind of fun to see the title um 
go right down to the final final race. We had kind of started predicting that, I think, Daryl, um, a little bit kind of coming into the fall, you know, late August or something is kind of when we started thinking like, okay, this might be down to the wire and, uh, and it makes it fun. It makes it exciting. And it's giving us crazy action right up until the end of the year. And how can you hate that? Well, I hate where we're going this weekend, but that's a story we'll get into in a minute. Right. <laughs> but I I thought this was over, and I came on here and said it after the United States Grand Prix that Max Verstappen was going to win the World Drivers Championship because Mercedes went to two of their strongest tracks and just looked dead. I mean, they had the pace advantage at uh, Coda. Verstappen still won. They got absolutely annihilated at Mexico compared to the Red Bulls due to, you know, the aerodynamics and everything with the thinner air. The Mercedes engine didn't produce a lot of power. The Honda engine did. We got to Brazil. Of course, we saw the last gasp because we knew Hamilton wasn't going to go quietly into that good night. They had a huge brawl, a controversial move. Uh, in Verstappen defending in that race. And after the officials call, they owe uh, Charles Leclerc an apology and Lando Norris an apology as well for the penalties they got for defending like the way they did in Austria. Um, Those penalties need to be retroactively rescinded because if what Verstappen did was legal, which was basically take Hamilton to the favelas outside the track, if that's mm-hmm. legal, then it needs to be constant like that, consistent like that the rest of the year. I, I really don't care whether or not it should have been a penalty. If you're not going to call it a penalty, make it consistent. Because if Hamilton does the same thing this week and it's a penalty, I'm going to have a problem. I agree. I agree. I think they should definitely make that a lot more fair. Mm-hmm. It the way that I I see it is that um you know how in in most sports the refs will if they feel like they you know missed something or or even called something they shouldn't have sometimes they'll throw the other team a bone and and either call something or not call something to almost right the wrong and yeah, I feel. Ball. And I almost feel like they gave one to Verstappen there because he's just had a shit season. If, I mean, pretty much, yeah. I mean, he's he's kind of, oh, I said the S word too. Um, (laughs) uh, (laughs) So he's he's had the best luck and the worst luck, and it's never been in between. And And I almost... And I almost feel like they just gave him one there, like, like, uh, you know, we we did you dirty at some point, so we're not going to penalize you, but just know that it doesn't happen again. That's your one. Yeah. Um, and whether that's the truth or not, I I don't know. I'm just speculating from the inside of Max's car right now, as you guys can see, um, with my virtual banner. Michael, mm-hmm. you you lost your Ferrari one. Yeah, I know. It's uh, <laughs> because I don't have a light. I keep oh. fading away, so I was just like, oh, screw it. I'm going to turn it off. But, uh, yeah, for the fans not watching, um, which is all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll be fixing um, that for next year. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm. Michael had had his background as the inside of one of the Ferrari cars, and I went and found Max's. Nice. <laughs> It has been a wild season. It just feels like things are starting to slip away from uh, Red Bull. But the one problem with this season that I will say is I've lost a lot of respect for Helmut Marco and Christian Horner over this season. I think just we how all they've have. how they've dealt with certain situations this season has just been beyond the pale. I... Uh, some of Marco's comments, especially after the big time incident at. Uh, Silverstone, it was just uncalled for, and that's going to give great material for Netflix, but 
those two, they complain about, especially Horner, complains about Toto, you know, running his mouth. And any time I hear him complain about what happens with Mercedes saying things, I always think, dude, have you listened to yourself? I swear. Because you've got a greatest hits at this point. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, it's all right. It's just, you know, I Christian's usually been the more calm, collected guy. But I guess he hasn't really had, like, a title fight to worry about. Mm-hmm. And now that he's in a title fight, you really see the – in uh and here we like to call the ratchetness, but <laughs> basically yeah, the yeah. desperation. Yeah, yeah. I I've never seen that man get that ratchet, and uh, it's it's surprising. He's usually the uh, calm, collected guy, but I guess with a title fight on the line, he he's he he just acts on desperation and. Uh, it's a lot crazy to see. I think Toto has been a lot more calmer behind the uh, behind the, the sign of scenes, but Christian, he's been he's been crazy. I think he I think he's been. I think when Drive to Survive is a thing, I think he's gonna be like the highlight reel. I mean, I understand why they have been trying to win a championship for so so long in this Turbo Hybrid era, and just have not had the opportunity they finally got good engines they finally had the best car and it's still still this mercedes dragon will not die so i i get it you know this is your rival you want to put him down you left him for dead and now they came back like the simpsons meme yeah and uh why should they just allow themselves to die i think I think if if Mercedes keeps, you know, fighting like they have been, I think they deserve to, you know, be defeated, but be defeated fairly. Mm-hmm. And how how will you guys look at this championship, no matter who wins? Because personally, I'm gonna say uh, they saved the best for of the turbo hybrid era for last, and I can't wait for 2022. I just wish we had more years like this during this era. It, it was really just dominated by one team. Yeah. I wish we could have. I There were so many things I wish that could have like happened that just didn't happen. Like I wish, I wish the Andretti deal would have went through. I wish. Did you hear I, about I the wish, news that they were like 48 hours from finishing that deal and it didn't yeah, go through? Yeah. Really? Yep, they were two day, They were going to announce it, like that rumor that they were going to announce it at the U.S. Grand Prix, that was real. They were going to announce it during that weekend, and they just couldn't get the deal done. It was based on who was going to have control, unfortunately, which, for a Formula 1 team, I'm not surprised. Yeah. What else? I wish... Uh, I wish Renault could have stayed. I wish... Uh... I wish Marussia and all those other teams were still here. It's just, it's been, it has been crazy. We saw Haas rise and fall. We've seen Ferrari rise, be competitive, and then fall back again. By their own fault. By their own fault, yeah. It's It's been a crazy era. We've seen teammates who were friends. Now they they don't like each other. I don't think Rosberg, yeah, Rosberg and Hamilton. I don't think they spoke to each other since their championship battle. I still think they haven't spoke to each other. Like that killed a friendship. That yeah. champ, that that fight. I, I I cannot believe that that happened. They grew up carding with each other and can't stand each other now. Yeah. That is how cutthroat Formula One can be, and I, and that just demonstrates how high pressure this series is. I think more than any other sports, uh, motorsport. Because, I mean, look at NASCAR. Denny Hamlin and Bubba Wallace didn't like each other, and now Bubba drives for Hamlin's team that's also co-owned by Michael Jordan. Like, Clint Boyer uh, basically went off about Michael Waltrip on a radio 
at a race in Bristol and then drove for his team. And those Ill-fated two are friends drive. to this day. Yeah. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer literally had a fist fight in their friendship. Oh, yeah, they tried to kill each other at Phoenix and then spent time in the booth together. Like, in NASCAR, time heals all wounds. It doesn't seem to do that in Formula One. It just seems to make them worse. Because it's just there's so much involved in it. There's money, sponsorships. It's, it, yeah, there's a lot that can go on in a, in a mm-hmm. Formula One relationship. There's also teams backing one driver and maybe not backing the other. It's, it's well, a lot that, that can happen. We've seen that at Red Bull over the last couple of years and maybe at Mercedes with this Botas-Hamilton deal. But um, And Ferrari. Well, in my opinion, Ferrari is the most equal it's ever been. I mean, now it is. But yeah. the situation might be fixed with third cars, but I don't know. I don't think the teams want to spend the money. Um, Chris, we haven't heard from you in a while. There's been a conversation about adding third cars to formula one it comes and goes is yep. that something you would want to see personally i'm out on it um i think it could go either way to be honest with you um and i think that uh if it does go that way i don't think that every team should get a third car if that makes sense mm-hmm. to you um yeah. and i and I don't want to say, like, knock the poor man down, but I do not want to see a third Haas car. Nobody wants to see a third Haas car. No. Same with, like, same with, you know, Alfa Romeo. And and you hate saying to these lower teams, but look at NASCAR. Rick Ware and Spire and, and all these other people have all these charters, and they have no business having a charter. And that's the only really hiccup that I could see with having three cars is, is I would only want like the top five teams to get one. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, if you want a third car, you know, they take the points from the top two scoring cars on each team. And, or you, you know, you declare at the early beginning of the season, these are our two primary cars and, and you can, you know, more or less lose your charter at the end of the year, if that makes sense to you. Can I yeah. can I add something to that? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. I think it would be good, but only for, uh, you know how F1 has, like, gym races? Mm-hmm. I think those are Monaco, Britain, uh, Spa. I think for, like, the gym races, you can bring a third car. Mm-hmm. But then in the other race during the regular season, no, you can't do that. Personally, this is what I would do just, just to piggyback off of what Chris has just said with you know with the top five getting it. I kind of like this idea. To make it better, I would mandate that that those five cars go to the top five in the previous year's Formula Two points. That way the prospective F1 teams get a look at those drivers in Formula One equipment and not just any Formula One equipment, top tier Formula One equipment. So those guys could find some rides at the end of the year. You know, you can see what they can do, whether or not they're worth investing in. And that gives the guys in F2 something to race for, knowing that they're going to get a guaranteed F1 seat at the end of the year if they finish in the top half of the points or in the top five in the points. So that's the one amendment I would make. Mm. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a good and, idea. Yeah. And of course, you know, we're getting through the good stuff. Unfortunately, we got to get to the bad. Um, we're racing in Saudi Arabia this weekend. Yeah. I'm not going to mince words on the human rights abuses that have allegedly been committed by the Saudi Arabian government. And we could have this conversation about racing in China as well. And I'd love to have that conversation in any other country with a spotty recent human rights record, to be honest. But that's a story for another day. Um, You could say that about our country. I mean, we could say about every country. But like I and I preface by saying recent history. That still doesn't get our country out of it. It really does. Anyway, the point is, 
This co- the, the place where we're racing, allegedly, a member of the royal family had a journalist from the local paper down the road, the Washington Post here. Uh, Michael and I both live in the DMV. Mm-hmm. Had that journalist who was Saudi Arabian, was critical of the Saudi Arabian government, um, he flew back to Saudi Arabia and allegedly that prince had him killed and dissolved the body in acid. Now I say alleged because there was never really a criminal case and it is extremely complicated on how a case like that would even work, but there is evidence that this was the case. Um, Women were not allowed to drive in that country before a couple of years ago. Did you wait? Other things. Did you see what uh, Vettel did? I did see that when he had brought some of the girls and women together to do that little carding thing. Yeah, that is so. One, it's just such a Vettel thing to do. I yeah, I like that he, like that is like, s- just so far up his alley, and it's perfect. He's um, such a good guy. And I didn't his realize best, that. His best, uh, Sebastian Vettel's best boy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, I think that that's. Protect that man at all costs. Yeah, yeah, yes, pretty please. much. And, and I, and I ramble on just to say, we shouldn't be here. Um, Formula One has to do better at where they decide to race, especially when it comes to countries like this. I mean, Yes, if we start cutting every country based on human rights records, we probably wouldn't have a Formula One World Championship. But we got to start somewhere. Right. Uh, we, we cannot allow this sport to become the crown jewel of dictators and countries with repressive human rights policies. By the way, this track just got approved today. Yeah, I have problems with that, by the way. Uh, as, as we were talking as well, they were on the they were on the clock to try and get this track finished. Apparently, it's been homologated. I really do not feel safe racing on a track that was homologated the day before we go practice, and the standard I think is like sixty ninety days out. I have a real issue with that, but we're here now. And we just gotta hope things are gonna work out for the best. Now, yeah. do you guys, do you guys think that they take it real easy on this, even during through the practices, maybe even qualifying? I don't like, especially, especially your two teams fighting for the constructors. I don't see Mercedes or Red Bull really risking a wreck in practice or they're not qualifying. gonna push hard. They're not going to push hard in, in practice, and people are going to overreact about the times. We know that's yep. going to happen because it's Twitter. But, folks, don't overreact if Mercedes or Red Bull are not near the top. They're not pushing. They're not going to be near the top, I bet you. No. There's no benefit for them to push those cars. No. And it's a wild circuit. Like, it is 27 turns, and most of the straightaways – they're turning the wheel. So it's going to be physical. So they're going to be, you know, taking it easy. We're going to see a bunch of safety cars on Sunday. There's just no runoff at all. So I think we're going to see a ton of safety cars, which is something we don't usually see in Formula One. Yeah, I really, man, I really feel like this race shouldn't be happening right now. You want to know how bad this is? I'm getting United States 2005 vibes from this. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> don't say I'm that. Sorry, but I I'm getting the vibes. I really don't want to say it, but I'm getting those vibes. <sighs> this would like, be the worst time for them. Recently, just got finished. This would and be it's the... just been homologated. Nah. This would be they... the worst time for them to have a US 2005. Every, those that don't remember that race, they had tire issues so badly. All but six cars, all the Michelin cars, and it's a story that I have to tell. I, I keep saying I'm going to tell it in its entirety, and I don't get around to it. But 
short version, if that happens where we have a bunch of tire failures and worse, it affects the championship, F1 Twitter is going to detonate about Pirelli, about this racetrack, about this country. It's going to be ugly on Twitter, especially for the team that gets disadvantaged in the championship. You think you think the tar was bad when they told them not to one stop. This might actually be bad. I don't know why, but I'm really getting the vibe because of just how like how the track just got finished. Chris, and how badly is we going to hear Chris Horner, Christian Horner explode if it's Max that ends up losing a tire in the championship? Uh, you would think that the summer break was tame. <laughs> it was not tame. But, but realistically, though, if anyone is going to make a change happen, it's Horner. Yeah. Like, I don't think Toto would pursue it enough, but Christian Horner will probably have a hit out on him by the Saudi Arabian government for the yeah. mud that he will drag them through because you know he will never let it go. He will no, never he stop talking about it, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. So you know what? If it's going to happen to anybody, let it happen to Max because they say hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, but I would change that to hell hath no fury like Christian Horner scorned. Yeah. Um, if this happens... Well, first, he will never be able to go to that country again. You're right. Um, I don't. I don't know if you can um, race direct from Austria, but they'll figure out a way to do it. He will not be allowed to that, in that country again for his safety. But yes. they have got to be crossing their fingers. Nothing goes wrong to either car, either championship contender. Yep. So we cross our fingers. And we will see how things go in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. But before that, uh, first, I want to congratulate Chris on winning the Nearest the Win Championship. Yay. Woo-hoo. First career title and Nearest the Win for Chris. He did have a great season last year in the half season that he came in with us. So I'm not surprised that he had the picks go his way. He is now the pick king for nearest the win or for the extra mile uh, before we go uh fellas who do you think is going to win the f1 uh world drivers and world constructors championship i don't even want to go to be honest with you <laughs> i don't i don't i don't either i i realistic i know who i want to win it mm-hmm. and i think who i want to win it doesn't win it to be honest with you yeah. um and if we want to get into it on the other side of the break, we can. Um, I'm sure that's kind of a big part of what you got planned today. Um, so I don't want to, you know, put all my – show my hand too much, but I I think that Lewis grabs number eight. Yeah. I honestly – I'll go ahead. I guess I'll go. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, I thought – Lewis Hamilton was left for dead, and he's back. Um, it feels like Max might hold on, but I just think where we are now, how fast the, the Mercedes is back on parity with Red Bull, and Hamilton wants this this eighth championship more than anything in the world. I kind of agree with Chris that I think Lewis is going to pull off probably his greatest championship win of all eight. Michael, what do you think? I think he's got, with the way he's been performing lately, I think he's got a great shot, but we can't really count out we're stopping either. Mm-hmm. We also really can't count on them crashing into each other either. Oh, God. I hope that doesn't happen. That's the one thing I hope does not happen, or one of the many things... I hope does not happen that they touch again. Please just don't, don't hit each other again. What would you do for a championship? We'll see. Uh, Taryn is actually taking uh, Verstappen to win it all. 
So I we, we shall think see. Yeah, that's a good, pretty good shot. Thank you, Taryn. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I hope. Yeah. Wishful thinking, but. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to review IndyCar and Formula One, or not Formula One, and NASCAR, talk a little bit about the next-gen car, and as well as talk about some of the other series that we may not have talked about on this show, but we had some fun with. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Each morning with list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day. The new just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the colleagues, and everything in between. This is me, of Larry B. of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for The Defining Moment with me, of Larry B. every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. show with your host Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world, from the English Premier League to the World Cup to MLS, Liga, MX, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We are back. We're having a little bit of a conversation off, uh, obviously off camera, as we'll say, or off the air about the ongoing Formula One World Championship. And it's a nail biter, folks. Um, If things go the way they should, it's going to be down to four points, depending on what happens with the fastest lap. And at that point, it's winner take all at Abu Dhabi. Um, It's going to be interesting. I will say that. So, we now continue into IndyCar and NASCAR. We'll start with IndyCar. Get that one out the way. IndyCar is the one that ended first out of all of them. And I did not come into this IndyCar season thinking Alex Pillow was going to win the championship. I thought this was going to be Scott Dixon's to lose. Obviously, he lost it. But what we saw in IndyCar was a one a serious changing of the guard between the old guard and the youngins and two some of those quote-unquote f1 rejects uh like marcus erickson roman grosjean um kevin magnuson when he came over and did a race they showed they still have some racing skill left in the tank yeah they definitely Especially Grosjean. Grosjean had a great race, great season this year. 
Absolutely. That's what I was just going to say is, is he really did, I think, especially when you consider, you know, last year, um, he just getting back in the car after something like that is, is, is crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, to, to, to be as competitive as he was all season long was, it was just really good to see. I just think it's funny though. We we used to make fun of that man so much the year, the year before. We really did. And now he's looking like he's gonna be a threat. And uh, IndyCar. Mostly Caitlin and Lita's fault, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Throwing them under the bus for that. (laughs) I was like, man, what to throw them under the bus? Love you if you if uh, Caitlin or Lita are listening. They're not here to defend themselves either. <laughs> yeah, I had to take the parting shot. But hey, um, Grosjean's now going to be racing for Andretti next year, and we'll see him have a chance at the championship. And I think we're just glad that he's able to race again after almost losing his life, as Chris said, at uh, Qat- not Qatar, sorry, at Bahrain. A couple of Decembers ago during that COVID season, but our last December during the COVID season. So I'm happy to see him. Another thing that we saw, Jimmy Johnson. This was a weird one. Um, yeah. He got better as the season went on, but I think people had overinflated expectations of what they expected Jimmy Johnson to do. I saw a lot of people complaining that, oh, he's, you know, taking up a seat from somebody. He's really not. I mean, who was really going to take that seat? Um, Yes, it was new for him, and he had struggles because he was a rookie that's never driven this style of car before. But nobody was expecting Jimmy Johnson to go out and win races. That was not the deal. It was a seven-time Cup Series champion living out his glory or living out his retirement on a part-time schedule racing a car he's never raced before. And I don't know where it got crossed up that he was supposed to be a contender for the championship. Cause I didn't think that no one here thought that. Oh, uh, you know, that got weird well, to be honest. People like to poke things and, uh, just be unnecessary. Uh, uh, NASCAR fans above walls, but, um, Oh Lord, don't get me started on that. Yeah, I, I think it's just people being people. Mm-hmm. Chris, what did you think of Jimmy's performance during the uh, IndyCar season? So it was what I expected. Um, kind of like you were saying, um, at least people who are understanding had somewhat reasonable expectations for Jimmy. I didn't expect him to go out and win races. Um If he did win one, I figured it would be lucked into it. Um, And so, you know, consistent performances where he gets better. And um, that's, you know, that's what he did. It seemed like he got more competitive as the year went on. And Mm -hmm. what more can you really want out of somebody, um, especially who's learning the car, is if, if you're not getting better, then you don't need to be there and I think that Jimmy at the very least earned his ride time for the year and he deserves not deserves because I don't really think that people deserve anything but he has earned the right to have more seat time um, based on what he was able to accomplish in terms of getting better and just his competitiveness overall start to finish I think the best you're going to see... I don't think he's ever going to be a championship contender, nor do I think anyone thinks that, or should they. But I think eventually he'll have some top 10s, top 5s. He might surprise us and win one day. But I don't really see it. I I really don't. It'd be cool. Yeah. It would be cool. I think he's just having fun, though. I mean, he is. He's allowed to have fun. 
but we'll see what happens. Uh, the one, the last thing I will say about the IndyCar season was there any better moment than seeing Elio Castro Neves finally get number four at Indy in May? Nah, there's no better moment. I was thinking that myself. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That was such a feel-good moment. And now he's going to go to have a chance at immortality and get five. I don't see it. It's going to be tough. Uh, Indy chooses its winners more than winners choose Indy. Maybe he'll be able to do something. We will find out very, very soon. I just wish he would have won a championship. Yeah, it's weird he's won so many IndyCar championships. Our IndyCar, you know, Indy 500s won a ton of races. Never got that championship in open wheel. It was really weird. And it wasn't for a lack of trying, by the way. It wasn't. It really wasn't. Yeah. So now we move on to, obviously, my favorite sport, NASCAR, and how that season went. Um, I am still not finished that humble pie on Kyle Larson, by the way. Um, I did not even have him winning, making the playoffs. He showed me and he showed a lot of people, um, with his performance this season, 23, 11 had the season. I expected, I did not expect him to make the playoffs. They didn't, I expected them to have struggles. They did Uh booty Barker getting on the box there with Bubba really helped. And I'm glad to see that pairing together. I'm still buzzing over the Talladega race. I really am, but NASCAR finds itself with the next gen car needing to get this right. And we were seeing that with the organizational test coming up at Charlotte. It looks like we're going to get our wish of the 550 horsepower package going away. And we had that two day test a couple of weeks ago uh, before Thanksgiving with the 550 in the next gen car. It looked somewhat harder to drive, but guys, the passing wasn't there, and definitely the speed wasn't there. Yeah, and we kind of need a mixture of both of those to make the sport interesting, or more interesting. Yeah, I didn't really watch a ton, and I didn't really follow the testing uh, very much, Mm -hmm. to be completely honest. Um, It 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 was interesting to hear what people had to say um and i'd watch clips on youtube or not on youtube but on twitter you know as like pocrists or whatever drivers sharing videos um but I, I didn't really read too much into it um because i don't really care what most people have to say about it i care what the racing looks like and i don't really want someone putting an idea in my head of what I expect this Mm -hmm. next gen car to look like. So I, I try to stay away from the commentary um, about the cars and the lap times didn't seem like they were, they were completely off from where, where, you know, the, the current cars are. Um, And that could be a couple of reasons as they get more comfortable with the way these cars drive, we'll probably get similar race or lap times, but um, I, I want to see the cars on the track. I don't want, I don't want to go into the season with the preconceived notion that the car is good or bad. Yeah. We will definitely have to see how these tests go. And honestly, watching the test is exciting for about 15 minutes. And it's like background noise when I'm working at work working at work obviously while i'm you know doing something at work but nascar obviously did not see what they wanted to with as they really changed up the whole testing schedule uh to come back to charlotte with a three car test i think next week and then they're going to follow that up with a organizational test uh they're going to bring different horsepower packages there's a rumor that Larry Mack said on uh, Sirius XM Radio that the 750 horsepower package could be the standard after this test, which, to me, is good. I really didn't get the point of having two different engine combos to begin with. So if they're going to go 750, do it at all the tracks. 
and let's just be done with it. Get some throttle time in there, but we'll see. Um, what were your guys' thoughts on the uh, Cup Series season? Um, it was good. I, I enjoyed it overall. I still am a firm believer that the season is too long. Um, I'm a little bit Same. more of a fan of the Formula One style uh, season where where you have less races, but they seem much more interesting. Um, and this year really drove home that too long of a season feeling. I mean, once we started getting into the playoffs, it was more of a chore to watch than it was enjoyable. Um, and I, I think that's something that's solved very easily. And that's by a short and take, taking 10, 10 races off the schedule right now. 28 races, I think, is where the schedule needs to be for Cup. I know there, there's TV contracts and stuff they have to deal with, but you got to get off this 36 race thing. It, it just does. It, it's too long. That's why we're with the playoffs as it is, because by the summer, the championship winner would get too far out. Nobody could catch them. So I honestly think you need to take eight of these races, slash them, which is most of the duplicates, and go from there. I don't think the races need to be shorter. We just need to have less of them, and that'll save the team some money so we can actually have a practice and qualifying session. Agreed. Look at baseball. They have more games than you can watch like you can't watch every game and that's how nascar is starting to feel like the all-star race i had no interest in watching it because it was the gimmicky race was horrible. it was gimmicky it was at texas um and there's just too many races the last thing i want to do is watch a non-points paying race yeah so. the kyle larson won so <laughs> Kyle Larson won a lot of this. He won I, a I, midget race um, a couple weeks ago. So uh, surprise, that, that just surprise. tells you what he's doing. Surprise, he's probably, you face. He, now, what I, now, one thing that I do love about the offseason is I do love watching the Chili Bowl. Um, yes. And so I'm more of a Christopher Bell fan than a Kyle Larson fan. Um, so when I watch, I'm, I'm watching Christopher Bell. And... Um, Larson's gotten us the last couple of years, and I think that uh, I think this year Christopher Bell reclaims the Chili Bowl title. It's gonna be a fun race. The, the Chili Bowl is some is one of those ones I got to knock off my bucket list. It looks like a really fun race, but they have got to work on the downtime between the heats and the main event because last year that was ridiculous how long it took to get that race started. Yeah, yeah, I remember that was. Yeah, I feel like I fell asleep during the main event. No, no, I did. I didn't. I watched it because Christopher Bell flipped with with not much, only a handful to go. Yeah, it took like an hour and a half for them to get that started. Yeah, they had like Chase Elliott coming on and talking, and and you could tell they were really like going down to the pitch, like, "Hey, can you come talk to us for a couple minutes?" Yeah, they were they were that that last twenty minutes they were scraping the barrel. They were scrambling. So, we will see. It's going to be a fun off season, And now is the time we get into some of the series that, you know, we don't talk about normally here. I really enjoyed my first season watching H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes all the way through. Um, it was the, I got to go to that race in Gunnersville, the start of their season after two years off, which was a great experience. I definitely want to make another one of their races before too long. Unfortunately, all their races are either in Alabama or the West Coast, and that's money. So we'll see if I can get out there at some point. Um, a lot of hard racing this year in H1 Unlimited. Uh, a very competitive fleet led to a lot of broken parts, especially at Tri-Cities in uh, Washington State. Again, congratulations to J. Michael Kelly for winning the Drivers' Championship. Congratulations to Miss Home Street for winning the National High Points for the teams and getting to keep the U1 for another year. And the World Endurance Championship 
It was fun getting to see the hypercars out there. Didn't really pay a lot of attention to that season, unfortunately, because it was really Toyota's to lose. Um, Alpine was running a jumped up LMP1, and Glickenhaus is, well, Glickenhaus. But next season, cannot wait. Got Peugeot coming in to the World Endurance Championship. Bicols is supposed to have their car. Glickenhaus and Alpine have signed up for the full season. So that's seven cars in hypercar next season. And 2023 in the World Endurance Championship. My goodness. Michael and I are salivating at what that season's going to look like with all those manufacturers running either the hypercar or the Le Mans Daytona hypercar variant. It's going to be an incredible year in sports car racing. Definitely. Definitely. It's going to be great. So this is it. A season that started in January in Daytona comes to an end now with Formula One finishing up in the Middle East. Uh, Michael, Chris, your final thoughts on the 2021 racing season? Surprising. Especially from the uh, Formula One point of, view, point of view. I think the best man will win each respective. Whoever wins, I'm going to respond. I'm going to backtrack. The winner of each series has deserved their titles. No one, no matter how anything shakes out, I mean, NASCAR's already done, and everybody that won their titles was deserving. Hemrick may be questionable, I guess. Um, but uh, Lewis or Max, whoever wins it, they are very deserving. Um, it's been a very rough year for those guys, uh, very tough. And um, a lot of setbacks on both teams. And it's, it's going to come down to the wire. It's going to come down to... Um, Mercedes having a better car but worse strategy and Mm -hmm. it's how bad their strategy is because this championship will come down to Mercedes strategy that's how this whole thing goes and it starts in two days three days it has been a season of surprises in all three series that we main line here on the extra mile. It was an enjoyable season. Um, it got testy at times, mainly due to situations in NASCAR, but it was fun. And I can't wait to do it again next year with you guys. We will get started. Of course, the week before the 2022 edition of the Rolex 24, we will also be active on the IE Sports or on our Twitter, Extra Mile IE Sports Radio, and check out a lot of the other IE Sports Radio shows we have, like Set Point, The Defining Moment, Three and Out, and our regional shows as well that are expanding every day. And if you want to hear more about those, check out speaker.com slash IE Sports Radio for a full list of all of our shows. Also, check out the website, IE Sports Radio.com. If you missed any episode of any iSports Radio show, make sure you check out any place podcast can be heard and YouTube where we have a collection of pretty much every iSports Radio show from the beginning. And during this off season, make sure you check out some of our regional shows like Made in Colorado with Gary Funk, uh, Kansas City Sports Talk with the franchise, High Octane Entertainment with Justin Lair, and more Frozen Takes with AJ for Everybody up there in Minnesota, make sure you check it out. I'm going to miss cracking this mic on Thursday nights for about a month, and then we will be back with you guys. Make sure you tune in. Make sure that date before we leave. When is the 2022 Rolex 24 again? I don't remember these things off the top of my head. I got ADHD, so leave me alone. Um, That race will be... The 29th through the 30th of 2022. So we will be back on the air Thursday, the 20th. So two days after my birthday, January 20th, 2022. The new season of the Extra Mile begins. But for now, 
We're going to take a much-deserved break. The checkered flag has fallen on this edition of the Extra Mile. We'll see you guys in 2022. For Michael and Chris and everyone here at IE Sports Radio, my name is Derek Kinsey Jr. We'll see you for the next green flag in 2022. Good night, everybody.